Uh, Ron and Fez show. I'm Ron. There's Fez. Hiya, buddies. What a day it is. Beautiful day out there, Fez, but awful, awful news. Yeah, yeah r- really bad news. That's true. It really is. Uh, we lost Bruno Kirby yesterday. Bruno Kirby, of course, for Godfather 2, Good Morning Vietnam, Spinal Tap, City Slickers, I think most people probably know him from. Did, did the guy ever do a bad uh, film fest? Did, was he ever bad in any film? No. I don't think he was. No. Not a bad role. Yeah. So today I'm inconsolable. I almost didn't even feel like doing the show today. That's how bad I felt. Oh, I'm sorry for you. Do you understand uh, inconsolable at all? Yeah, I understand inconsolable. So then you don't tell me that you're sorry. Oh. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. It's just a really... Just an awful sad time. Well, if there's anything I can do to make you feel better today, just let me know. I'm inconsolable. I cannot be consoled. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Again, inconsolable. Uh, Keeping an eye on this uh, MSNBC story, Fez, we've got a plane on the runway and some kind of security incidents taking place. Yeah, what we heard, it was a flight from London, I think a United flight from London, was uh, bound for D.C., Mm -hmm. got diverted to Boston. The word is crazy passenger. Uh, She was claustrophobic, started causing a disturbance, and the pilot said, I got to put her down in Boston. I guess this lady was so nuts with her claustrophobia. Now, didn't she yell out the term Al-Qaeda, though? The feds are denying that she was yelling Al-Qaeda, that she had Vaseline and a screwdriver. Those are all the rumors coming out of this flight. Right. But something's up other than a crazy passenger because every bag of luggage is being looked at out on the runway. They've got all the luggage out there. Now, did they get the people off the plane? I think the pe- I don't know if the people are off it or not. Because I got news for you. I'm kicking a fucking window out. If I'm sitting there and they go, we better go through the luggage, we're going to leave you on, on board, though. Yeah, I guess they don't want anyone getting off while, there's, while they can still check their luggage. They're probably still on there. Uh, Jermaine, Jermaine, you're on the Ron Fest show. Hi. I wonder what, what's the name of the song that came on at the beginning of the show? Uh, it's called Use Me, Bill Weathers. All right, thank you. All right. Welcome to the planet Earth. Uh, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. I'd like to know that name that they play before football games where everybody stands up. If we get the chance, some of the people take off their hats. I'd like to look into that. That's the uh, national anthem, sir. You should know it. Uh, here is, uh, let me go to, uh, Dan. Dan, you're on the Run of Fest show. Dan, go ahead. Buddies. Yeah. Buddies, what's up? Yeah. Hey, great intro this, today, Earl. And, uh, you're probably going to get a lot of phone calls, uh, today regarding all the bullshit that was going on on Opie and Anthony, them bashing you guys. Uh-huh. And I'm just, I'm really fucking pissed off, man, because, it, you know, there's no excuse for this shit. You guys do a wonderful show. You guys don't steal shit from them. I don't know where this is coming from, but uh, I think you guys really need to address your, your listeners and your fans and, and put this stuff on the table because these guys, these guys are total assholes for even a accusing you guys are stealing their material. I don't know where they're coming from, this left field bullshit. Uh, I'm going to hang up and listen to your answer because there's a lot of people that are probably wondering, man, but you know, you guys fucking blow the doors off of Opie and Anthony. You guys are the fucking best, and uh, I'm just really pissed off, and, and I just I don't even know what to say anymore. Would you man. say that you're fucking... inconsolable at this point? I would say that I'm very inconsolable. I'm very, I'm almost oh, I'm sorry, man. sir. He's inconsolable. See, maybe Fezzi can learn something from you, because I don't know. You guys right. just you guys are the fucking greatest, and uh, if you can just fill me in, man, because I don't know what's going on. I'll well, hang up and listen. You guys are the best. Well, you know, I don't know how much of it we can talk about at this point right now. I mean, there are problems, yes. But, you know, some of this stuff can't be uh, addressed at this level. It's just that simple. Yeah, it's going to be handled by, you know, people like Eric Logan, maybe Hugh Panero. Um, I'm just going to say this much. Don't even say it. Don't say any much. That doesn't help at all. Well, I Until just, everything is settled, and it should be settled, uh, an office is much bigger than this, you shouldn't even be talking about it. Yeah, I shouldn't be talking about this, but I think this goes for everything. when I hear you say but, and then I know you're going to say something that you're not going to be able to take back. 
Well, that just goes for everybody, no matter what sort of situation they work in. I think I'm speaking in general terms. All right, go ahead and say it then. It's up to you, because I can't stop you, it seems. Well, I mean, there's problems here, yes, and I'm just going to say this. Sexual harassment is not a joke. And I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah, I think that's too far. I don't think that goes into the details of what the problems are between the shows. I think it's the exact detail. And that's why I thought you went too far. I think you exactly out at the situation. It'll be settled. Let me just tell that to everybody. Well, and, let me point this out. Anthony has nothing to do with it. You may get your things and go, sir. You're fine. We'll let you know if we need anything. I'm sorry, but, you know... Grab ass on the office place. No, it's, it's not, not gonna. It's not grab ass. Brush. At most, it's a brush. But it's not gonna be tolerated, no matter where anyone works. Uh, here's uh, Dan. Dan, you're on Run Fez. Hey, what's up, buddy? Yeah. yeah. It's a big shame about this whole mess, but uh, I just wanted to say, I hope you guys aren't bringing Twitchells on your show. That guy's a fucking hack. I hate that. Well, whatever is happening between us and Twitchells is in negotiations right now. So that's really, again, something we can't talk about. He's going to ruin your whole show. Hmm. How can you ruin something that already stinks? That's my point there. That's like saying you're going to ruin shit. I don't think it can be done. You could ruin, like, the consistency of shit, I think. It's still shit. Yeah. No matter what the consistency is. That's why I come in here feeling confident every day. At most, all we can do is change the consistency. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Should uh, I even do the show with this Bruno Kirby thing hanging over me? It's just too much. Well, I'll be here for you. And I'll help you make it through. Inconsolable. That's the point I'm at right now. I cannot be consoled. Can I take you to lunch or something afterwards, after the show? What were you going to spend? Why don't you just give me that money? Because I'll tell you what I was going to have. I was going to have surf and turf, two appetizers, salad, and probably dessert. Ah, grief makes you hungry. Yeah. So that probably was going to come to about eighty-five, ninety. Why don't you just give me seventy-five right now? And you're out ahead of it all. I was thinking of sandwiches. Give me 14. See if it works. Uh, Dave, Dave, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Yeah. Hey, uh, Ron, I understand your inconsolability, yeah. and your your good friend Fez has been thwarted in his attempts to console. I'm just wondering if... I'm so sorry him about him. Yeah. I mean, throw him a bone, maybe let him know when you might become consolable. I will. Right now, I'm in a state of shock, though. I can't deal. I understand. Yeah. I understand. What are you going to do about it? Well, whatever I can do for you. I'm just here. Right now, all I can do is be here for you. That's all you've ever really done. No matter what was happening on the show, all you've ever really done is be here. Yeah, and I always will be. Right by your side. Well, while you're here? Yeah. Help. Oh. Carry your uh, part of the load. Uh, Redding. Redding, you're on Run Fez. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to say, first, I, I uh, miss Consolable Ron, by the way. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this whole uh, situation with uh, with you and ONA, um, like, I, I was talking to the guys on Whack Bag, and they all, they all don't believe that, you know, this is going on. But I, I just want to let everybody know, you know, that this is real, you know... I've been. I, I, you can see it. I mean, you guys. You guys do a great show, and they're just getting jealous because you know. Well, uh, they're getting jealous because they didn't get. I don't even want to bring it up, but they didn't get Malaysia. And I know, in the back of Opie's mind, he's not going to be satisfied without Malaysia. Some things you can't deal with. I understand. You know that he's. You know. I understand the pressure on Opie. Sure. I totally understand that. That's Now You have no pressure on you. Well, and, I still, and, and I you see still, him. And yet you still bend, which is really <laughs> odd. Yeah, but, you know, it doesn't give anyone the right. You don't go around looking uh, down people's blouses. I wouldn't even bring that up. Just shouldn't happen. Not the fucking king of the world. 
Where'd that come from? I'm just saying. No, I mean the crazy king of the world thing. Where did that come from? Was that a Leo shot? Maybe more James Cameron. Uh, here's uh, Kirby or Ron Fez. Hey, man, let's not forget Mr. Kirby's also in the uh, Sleepless in Seattle. Again, another great movie that, uh, you know, he's always a part of something awesome. Well, uh, I don't know anything about Sleepless in, uh, in Seattle. I do not have a vagina. I understand it's something the women watch. I thought he was great in it. I think and he, was he in... wasn't in Sleepless in Seattle. He was when Harry met Sally. Yeah, it was the other one. <laughs> Which is a guy's movie, and everybody <laughs> should watch. Uh, here is um, Sean. Sean, you're on a fez. Hey, how you guys doing today? Yeah. Uh, listen, uh, I'm a big fan of Opie and Anthony, and I started liking you guys because of them. Oh, thank you I very much. Just, I, I could definitely start not liking you because of them as well as too. Go ahead. Don't you think you guys? Don't you think you guys owe them a little gratitude for where they took you in life with right now? You know what? I mean, I you know everybody owes everybody, but Fez has his parameters. There's certain oh, now, things. Now he's a star. There's certain now he's things. A star, all of a sudden, he could sit there and trash the guys that made him. Maybe some. Man. Maybe I'd like to come to work and not be leered at. Maybe that's a maybe that's a right every American has. Even black Americans. Somewhat. But yeah, for mostly. Like I said, this will be settled in a corporate office. You know what? Let's just keep it off the air then. Whatever your uh, problems are right, with those guys. And when we say guys, obviously we don't mean Anthony. Oh, sure. Yeah. Opie, Norton, Fez, something happened. Something happened between the three of them. Yeah. And I just want to say, you know, that a person should be able to feel safe coming to work. <clears throat> And another thing, too, and, and I'll just drop this in as this, because Fez makes one accusation, let's not take it into other areas and act like that's the problem. The problem is whatever Fez feels took place between him and the boys. And when I say the boys, obviously, I don't mean Anthony. Yeah. Not O&A, O&N. Yeah. What's O&N? Opie and Norton. Oh, I thought you were throwing Earl in there. Oh, no. Earl, you're fine. Earl just tends to look the other way. Mm. Don't get me involved. Right. I don't blame you, Earl. Stay low. I don't care what happens. Uh, Andy Mike. Andy Mike, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, guys. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you want to talk about Big Brother, but, uh, Big Brother, but I just wanted to check, too, because, like, I called into ONA this morning before I, you know, caught on to all this, and do you guys, are you guys going to get set if I still call ONA, or you want me, you know, I'd... I'd I right now, I want you to call ONA exclusively. Really? Yeah, so until no this more thing Big works out. Yeah. Oh, well, all right. That kind of sucks, but... Yeah, yeah, well, you know, it costs us the Big Brother update. What can we say about it, you know? I understand. Uh, you're going to lose some battles in the war. And one of the battles we lost, Fez, was uh, Big Brother Update. Won't you Big Brother? Big Brother. It's a Big Brother Update. Let me just uh, ask you right off the bat, Fez. Did any of this actually happen, or is it all in your mind? No, uh, things actually happened. Okay. That I'm willing to, you know, go forward with. Right. Discuss it with uh, corporate heads. Lawyers, if I have to. Was the word camel toe used? Yeah. Because I heard it was. Yes. That's no rumor. That's not idle chit chat. That's that's true. You can't con you, you you just can't make comments like that. When someone's trying to come in, do their job, that's all they want to do. Can you wear looser pants? I shouldn't have to. True. It shouldn't be the victim's fault here, Ronnie. I'm well within my rights to wear what I want to to work. Mm. But I shouldn't have to come in here and, you know, run some sort of gauntlet to try to get to the to the studio. True. Some sort of tailhook convention hallway. That was a nice callback. Yeah. It's been a while. What, 10 years, 12 years? Probably more. Yeah. 
but I think it still fits. Uh, Bill, Bill, you're on Ronnie Fez. Yeah, Ronnie, I understand Fez's part in this, but I heard that you had something to play, too. When you when you threatened to give Earl back, that just broke the camel's back there, boss. Oh, Earl is going back with a bow on his fucking forehead. If nothing else comes out of this, Earl goes back. I don't want to go back. That may be one of my conditions. <laughs> Perfect. Make that number one. <laughs> that may be part of. Uh, I'm. Yeah, I'm going too far into this. Yeah. But it, that it definitely is going to be high on the list of any sort of possible sell- settlement. And I'm saying possible. Right. Because you don't even know if you're ready. No. No. This may go all the way into a courtroom. That's far. As far as I can take it right now. Well, I, I don't feel safe in here. I do not feel safe in here. It's not a safe place. It wasn't supposed to be. But it's a place of business. Right. It's true. where I come to work. Well, I don't even know if I would yeah. consider what you do work. I know you come to be. That shouldn't dismiss anything. True. That's not the technicality that would get this thrown out. Uh, Brian, you're on running first. Yeah, hey, Ronnie, I know you're inconsolable and everything. I'm inconsolable today over this Bruno uh, Kirby thing. i got to figure out something to do for you. I something to console you, but I understand that inconsolable feeling. But don't forget, he played Jason Patrick's father in Sleepers. It was a damn good movie. Yeah, I mean, the guy was always great. He was always great. I know. Spinal a- Tap. That little part that he played in Spinal Tap to me peaked. The limo driver, the creepy uh, uh, gym coach in um, Basketball Diaries. Excellent. Uh, Will, Will, you're on Run Fez. What's up, boys? I got two things for you. Yeah. Uh, the first thing is I didn't want you to forget about uh, Bruno Kirby's greatest role ever in The Freshman with Matthew Broderick. Fantastic role, fantastic film. And the uh, second thing, I just want to say uh, I love o a but uh, Ron Bennington is the funniest fucking guy in radio. Thank you. Later. Well, that makes Fez feel better about himself. Now nah, I'm starting to feel inconsolable. It's like a second rape. I shouldn't even use the word rape. Forget rape. Well, rape didn't happen. Rape has to be penetration. What about intent? Does that count for anything? I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a psychologist. I'm gonna I have told to, women I was both those things before. I'm going to have to end up seeing both. One time I uh, told a woman I was Pablo Escobar's best friend. I was in Miami. Uh, yeah. Down there, that's a big deal. Oh, I guess so. Yeah. It worked for you, huh? Mm. Brian, you're on a fez. Yeah, I heard Anthony's a little pissed and jealous about <laughs> um, his girlfriend won fez. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously she worries about fez. Now probably more than ever. Yeah. She's a nurturer. Yeah. But, you know, by nature. Nurture by nature. Wasn't that a band? Uh, and, uh, again, with this, whatever happened, the issue between Fez and the boys, nothing to do with Anthony. Yeah. I don't want, you know, anything I'm saying here, which is probably too much, maybe that's my problem. I put myself out there too much. I'm, t- I'm too friendly. I'm too gregarious. And then people, you know, start thinking they can take um, privileges. Maybe that's my problem. I should just shut myself off. Just come in here, head down, punch the clock, do the show, punch the clock, and leave again. You are here for exactly three hours a day, I noticed. I'm here a little less. I'm putting in my time. But, you know, you think, maybe I, maybe we're, you know, maybe we're not just people that see each other in the hallway between yeah. the two shows. Then, next thing you know, you know, someone's, yeah, snapping a bra strap or oh, something. Just stop. I, again, just stop. It goes too far. It goes too damn far. Hey, where did this uh, ranking thing came from? It came from some blog, right, Earl? What, of the cities? No, of the uh, Bobby D's. Did I send it to Dave? I think you sent that to Dave. Dave, what's the website? Because I, I want to plug the website if I'm going to talk about this. 
Wasn't it? Uh, uh, let me look at it, but it was mensnet.org. No, I, it wasn't. I don't know why you wouldn't just print up what I asked you to print up and why you feel like you have to write it up like it was yours. Uh, he also tells me that he has a report. Earl did a report yesterday, so today Dave wants to do a report. It rains and it pours with these bastards. It's Attack of the Clones, Ronnie. It really is. Uh, Dave, what's the answer? We're still looking it up. So basically, Fez, this is ranking the Bobby D's on one through six. Here are the famous Bobby D's. Uh, Robert Duval, Bob Dylan... Robert Downey Jr., Bob Denver, Bob De Niro, Bob Dole. Oh, okay. Who's your all-time favorite Bobby D? It's got to be Bobby De Niro. Really? Yeah. Over Bob Dylan? Yep, over Bob Dylan. Have you seen the movies the last several years? Um, Yeah, I've seen like the Meet the Fockers and stuff. Yeah. Still stay with them? I'm still going to stay with them. Uh, Earl, where are you? i got to go with Bobby D, Bobby Dylan. Bob Dylan for me, number one. Uh... Fe, uh, Fez, you're definitely De Niro. Yeah. Seen Mean Streets? No, I didn't see Mean Streets. Oh, that you would pick them then. All right, uh, Dave, let me go with you. Who have you got? Uh, I'm going to go with Dylan. He's more influential and a longer body of work. He's still putting out great albums. All right, Fez, who's your number two? Uh, number two would be Bob Denver. Um, over Robert Duvall and Bob Dylan. Yeah, Bob Denver Gilligan. You're just shock jocking. You're shock jocking. Who's three for you, Bob Dole? Bob Dole would come in last, I think, on that one. Uh, did you have a place I could say? City Rag. City Rag. Thank you very much. So Men's dot net was just crazy talk by you. Uh, that was a different list. My apologies. Yeah. You picked Bob Denver over Bob Dylan. Yeah, I did. I'm just not musically. You know, I'm just. I just don't listen to a lot of music. And as your movie fan, you haven't seen Main Street yet. No, I haven't seen that which either. Which is like the big one. Uh, here is uh, Liam. Liam, you're on a fest. Yeah, not even close. Robert De Niro, 100%. You're a big De Niro fan? Yeah, huge. and the movies from the uh, the recent movies, like when you brought up uh, Meet the Parents and Meet the Falkers, I thought that I thought he actually did like a pretty good job from just going like as the all time greatest dramatic actor to a uh, pretty good like co comedy role. Great, why don't you go watch Bullwinkle? Eight six six Ron Zero Fez, eight six six Ron Zero Fez. Here's Scott. Scott, you're on a Fez. Damn, he had a good one. He says, "Why isn't Bobby Darren in there?" Very good point. Bobby Darren should be part of that. Uh, and it's weird how many Bobby D's are out there. Bobby D must be the angle. Ryan, you're on Ryan Fez. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, I got to go Bob Dole, man. He's got the pen. He's uh, 80. He walks around with a rock-hard penis. Outstanding. Bob yep. Dole, I thought, you know, if he wins president, he has a shot at this. But when you come up short, you know, what are you going to do? I wonder if he would have been elected if he would have just picked up the Bobby D nickname more. Uh, Mark, you're on Ryan Fez. Yeah, what was Dave looking up on Men's.net? List of dates of guys? See ya. I hope that's not a gay site, is it? Uh, John, John, you're on the Run of Fez show. Go ahead, John. Come on. See, we're taking these calls, Fez, because of the war you started. Um, I did not start a war. I, I just, but you're ready to finish it. Yeah, that's true. I just simply went upstairs and explained to management that I'm not going to be... All right, let's not even get into it. Yeah. Uh, Earl, Fez the first person to ever stand up to Opie? As far as I know, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Not someone's uh, plaything. Not someone's plaything. Dave, you're on run of Fez. Hey guys, how you doing? Good. You're good. Robert Duval. Robert Duval is top. Story from the Kill Mockingbird to present day. I love it. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Doesn't make a lot of mistakes. And remember when he would uh, uh, work the pit crew for Tom Cruise in that race movie. The Days of Thunder. I like Robert Duval, but he can't be my favorite Bobby D. No, oh, you got Bob Denver up there as number two. Zach, you're on Ron Fez. Shock, shock. Yeah, what about Bobcat Goldweight? Uh, that's a G. That's Bobby G's. We'll do that on some other uh, day. 
Uh, here's uh, Bruce, you're on Fez. Hey, what about Bob Dillinger, who ought to take his gun out and shoot Fez in the fucking head for messing with Opie? Oh, jeez, it's not going to stop, Fez. These calls are not going to stop. They are going to find a way to get through. I should, I should realize that when I decided to make a stand. And say, you know, some behavior is unacceptable in the workplace. I understand. Uh, Dave, Dave, you're on my face. Hey, this is why women suck in radio. Huh? Oh, man, it's not going to stop. It's a firestorm, Fez. It's a firestorm. Uh, uh, Dom, you're on my face. Yeah, that's Dominic. How about uh, Brian Dennehy? That's uh, Brian D. We're looking for Bobby D's. And uh, according to the City Rag, uh, we came up with a list. Robert De Niro, Robert Duvall, Bob Dylan, Robert Downey Jr., who really underrated actor, Fez. I know he's no uh, Bob Denver, but he is an underrated actor. Uh, Bob Denver is part of the Bobby D's, and then Bob Dole. Uh, hey, Debbie. Debbie, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hello, we'll lost Chip. Uh, Jim, Jim, you're on Ron and Fez. Oh, Robert Duvall is the greatest actor of all time. That smell, that gasoline smell, smells like victory. If he only had one note range, you would have <laughs> nailed that impression. Here's uh, Bill. Bill, you're on the Ron and Fez show. 29875. Yeah, buddy. What's happening? Uh, the greatest play of all time, Bob Denier. Bob Denier. That's your man, Earl. Wasn't he white? Was his nickname White Lightning? Yeah. When he played for the, uh, was it Phillies and Cubs? Always uh, always a wild man, too. 866 Ron Zero Fez. I'll tell you what, if you really look at Deval De Niro, it's tough to say he was a better actor. Deval's done a lot of really, really great roles. Deval, I really liked in The Apostle. That's probably my favorite thing that he's done. Well, he's, But if you started to make up a list, you'd probably come up with it. Look at Dusty Rhodes on TV. Uh, you would uh, you would come up with tons, tons of names uh, of great films that he's done. Who is the definitive American actor, do you think? I'm going to say Al Pacino is the definitive American actor. I'm going to go back before then for the definitive and go, I was thinking Jimmy Stewart, but... I'm going to say Marlon Brando, because if you ask Pacino, who's the best actor, he would say Brando. If you ask De Niro, who's the best actor, he would say Brando. So I think that, that that's the high watermark. Who is the definitive, Earl? Um, my definitive actor would probably be, I would I would venture to say Robert Duvall, because the body of work is there, and it's it's been consistently solid. He rarely takes a bad role. Or, well, or tanks a role. Yeah, I mean, he's in a lot of bad movies, though. He's a guy that will work. Yeah, he'll work, you but know? he always adds a, sort of this air of dignity to even something that's not very strong. Even though the material's not strong, he always seems to to steal a movie or bring something good to he's a movie. He's strong. Uh, Michael, you're on Running Fest. Yeah, I think the one that's really popping right now is Edward Norton. Edward Norton started really strong, uh, hit a little bit of a... Um, a slick patch, and seems like he's back into it again. He's got some, I think it's this weekend, The Illusionist opens up. No. I'm not big on period pieces, so I don't know how I feel about it. I'm not sure where I'm going to go. American actor. Here is uh, Chris. Chris, you're on Running Fez. How are you? Hey, how are you? Yeah. What can I do for um, you? Hey, Robert Downey Jr., much better. Drugs, hookers, he's got it all. Got everything. You know, we're not talking about uh, drugs and hookers. We're talking about definitive American actor. Uh, Aaron, you're on Fez. Yeah, uh, Dylan coughed steak on my daughter at a fair once. And so I'm going to have to go with the... Uh, oh, Jesus Christ, it won't stop. These damn pests, Fez. These damn pests. We're just going to have to deal with this until we You know what we get they are? They're pesky. Uh, I, I, it's like they're just like pests in our face. I'm willing to do what I have to do to make sure things get rectified around here. And if that means put up with some stuff, fine. Hmm. But I'm in the right here. 
Are you? And people are going to find that out eventually. But are your friends being forced to pay? People like myself, Earl, even Pitsy? Even Pitsy. Yeah. Uh, Mateo, you're on Fez. Hey, guys. As far as just like classic American, you got to go John Wayne all the way. John I mean, Wayne. You think of it classic. Yeah, but we use classic. the word actor. That's the bad part. You have to be able to act. Not just show up. I'm surprised no one's mentioned Jack Nicholson. Now, here's the deal. He is a definitive American actor because does not make a lot of um, time period pieces. He's pretty much a contemporary actor. What are you talking about, time period pieces? You know, he's not Chinatown? making... Chinatown? He's not making Romeo and, and Juliet. He's make, No, he's not British. He's American. Right. You, you got a problem with De Niro making a lot of Romeo and doing a lot of Shakespeare? Look, I mean, doing Frankenstein and stuff like that. That's not American. If you look at Nicholson's uh, career, he pretty much plays all Americans. And he goes to sports events. He drinks That's beer. Not, that has nothing to do with actor. We really just need to look at an uh, actor. That's all. He's an actor. Uh, Eric, you're on a Fez. Hey, what's up, buddy? Miss Loyal Fez. I miss Loyal think... Fez, too. He was the best. He was. Uh, you got to think uh, Tom Cruise would say Fez is a fat nigger loving piece of shit. Oh, jeez. I don't think Tom, Tom Cruise would say that. Do you believe the pest, Fezzy, today? Do you believe oh. the pest? Oh, I believe it. You think they would be this pesky? I believe it. I didn't think their leader, Opie, was capable of some things. And Norton. Not Anthony. Why don't you unleash the RonFez.net crew on them? Maybe I will. Maybe, uh... Put them all in pet battle mode. My battle will be done in a corporate office or maybe in a court of law. Why don't you let KOP get into some of his hijinks? I can't depend on KOP. Why He's too busy with the Denver Film Festival or whatever it is oh, that's yeah, coming up. Come Bob to Denver? Denver. Is that the Bob Denver Film Festival? I don't. Good one. Thank you. Good one. I'm trying to tie it in there. Yeah, but why mock Fez when you know he's going through Sorry, a lot? Sorry, right I know, now. I know. Fez, can I ask you something? Sure. Ramon! Tell Fez he's full of shit. I didn't expect it out of you, Ronnie. Well, I just wanted to be part of the gang. I didn't expect you to be a pest. <laughs> I was just wanted to be, you know, part of something bigger than myself. Uh, Peter, you're on a Fez. Hey, it's Pete in uh, Florida. Hey, Pete. How are you? I'm doing well. I was going to uh, tell you what I thought about my favorite American actor, or the definitive American actor. The definitive. Uh, right? Let's always say this. The definitive, definitive would be, the uh, definitive. I would say Dustin Hoffman. Little Dusty Hoffman. Good actor, Fez. Strong. That's a very strong choice. Everybody loves him. You ever hear anybody go, you know who I don't like? Is that Dustin Hoffman? No one ever says that. No, they love him. Man, that's something that should get started. Ishtar, though. Jack never had an Ishtar. Jack's never been in a bad movie. Not an Ishtar. Uh, have you ever watched Ishtar? First 15 minutes. Hysterical. Fucking hysterical the first 15 it minutes. Uh, you just joined into the pack. Uh, Greg, you're on Fez. Yeah, I'd say it's got to be Harrison R. Ford. Again, we're going to need an actor. Not a guy running around from one scene to the other, but an actual actor. Uh, Jay, Jay, you're on Fez. Hey, what about Mel Gibson? A little anti-Semitic for me, Fez. Yeah, um, I prefer my all-American actors to be American. Yeah. And, to, you know. He is an American. He was raised in Australia, but born in America. Oh, I didn't know that. American citizen, yeah. Uh, Dano, you're on Fez. Show me how you suck a guy's cock with your mouth. Oh, jeez, Fez. It's happening again. It's happening again. See what you brought down on the show. See what happens when a person stands up for their rights. Yeah. When they stand up for themselves. And, you know, and they feel like maybe uh, they should be able to come to work and they're not, their body not made to be a plaything. You know something, Fez? You've made a stand here, and I feel like now I make, need to make a stand with you. Thank you. Because this is not so much... A, uh, something about what's going on between you and Opie, but the way a human should feel about himself, about the kind of respect that one person... Ramon! On. Tell Fezzy to stop felching his own brother! 
I really didn't expect that from yeah, you. No. That's why I loved it. It was the unexpected that worked there. You were the first person I called when this happened. Sorry I didn't take your call. I have... I uh, left messages. Mm-hmm. I have uh, the special Fez line that only you can reach me at. And I keep that under a pillow in the bathtub uh, with the cement over top of it. You still haven't returned those calls. Mm. I'm going to get back to you later. Jim, you're on of Fez. Yeah, man. Uh, how about Harvey Keitel, the definitive actor? Hey, Fez, now go get your fucking pull pump. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Just ignore, Ronnie. Just ignore. I can't. I don't know what to do anymore. What did that guy in Orlando do? What was his name? Oh, Jim Phillips. What did Jim Phillips do when he found himself in this position? Do you go underground? Do you stop taking calls? Maybe we go to Santa Fe. Maybe that's that's what we do. Went on phones in Santa Fe? Well, Sports Nation, the phone number would change. Sports Nation. Hey, uh... No, I'm not going there. Here's uh, Chris. Chris, you're on Running Fest. How are you? Hey, how are you guys doing? Yeah. I got two for you. I got Clint Eastwood, which I think is the best. And then there's fucking Fez that's a little bitch that piss, sits down when he pisses. Oh, jeez, Fezzy. You almost got it all out, Chris. And whether and Fez... and pissing and bitches, bitches piss. Fez finds it to be more sanitary to sit and pee. It's no one's business. Plus, you're able to talk so nobody can see your business. In case someone happens to walk in that stall. Yeah. Hour three. Hour three, brother. Hour three. That's what I'm asking you for. Uh, Ben, Ben, you're on my affairs. Charlton Heston, you damn dirty apes. Uh, Charlton Heston would be great if we were saying who's responsible for all the gun deaths. Yes, then the definitive would be Charlton Heston. Is he still alive? He's still alive. We haven't seen him since they announced that he had Alzheimer's. And did he have Alzheimer's or did he just get lost? I think he had the actual Alzheimer's. Yeah. And that was, what, three, four, five years ago? Yeah, it's been a while. I know the after the Michael Moore movie, we never saw him again. After the Fahrenheit 9-11, his name even came up. Everybody yelled at Michael Moore, you're mean to a crazy old man, and then that was the end of him. Yeah, I don't even know if we saw him during the 2000 election, like in support of George W. or anything with the, with the NRA lobby. I'm not sure either. I know Michael Moore was after that election, right? Or before? Yeah, he was after. Yeah. When I'm talking about Michael Moore, I mean just that one movie. The Fahrenheit 9-11 the definitive look at the Bush White House. <laughs> definitive documentary, maybe. Because it won an Oscar, and it's one of the biggest... It is the biggest uh, ticket-selling doc docs of all time. So what? It's ten times bigger than any other doc. It made over $100 million. The second biggest doc of all time, $17 million. Right, so it's the definitive... And you know who made the second? Uh, Errol Morris. Michael Moore. Bowling for Columbine was number two. He's got that locked up. Oh, yeah. He's Doc Man. And then the new one should be big. The Sicko. Oh, yeah, where he takes on the pharmaceutical uh, industry in this country. That He takes on the fat cats, Fezzi, in Washington. <laughs> when is that coming out? It seems like that one's been like on the verge of coming out forever. Uh, not until at least next year. Oh, okay. Uh, it takes a long time to put together a documentary. I'm doing one right now. What's yours? Ramon! Tell Fez to take his lips off his dad's bowls. That's not a documentary. That will not be shot. It won't be out next year. I, I'll say this from the Pest point of view. It's immature. It's stupid, but it is kind of fun. You know, because no one sees it coming. I don't think it's fun or anything. Especially what I'm going through. Maybe How? they, maybe if uh, they knew all the facts, maybe if I was able at this juncture to talk about it, mm. everything that happened to me in this office, right? maybe they wouldn't so blindly uh, follow Opie's lead here, attacking me. So what are you saying? The past are zombies? I'm saying they don't have all the facts. Right. What are you saying? They're worthless cult members? Mm. You know what you cost me, Fez? Won't you? 
here's a Big Brother update. Now, no more Indie Mike Big Brother update. Well, I feel sorry. I feel bad about that because we didn't even get to the sequester part yet. Yeah, me too. No one's even been picked for the jury so far. Well, it seems like this show's taking forever, doesn't it? It really does. Yeah. And they haven't even put anyone back in the house. And then it, I don't think they're going to this year. And then it ends in a month. Oh, yeah, because there are... seven people they're going to get rid of in a month. It's going to be a bloodbath. Mm. Uh, JJ, you're on Run Fez. Hey, boys, big yeah. ass 2014. Hey, body. Hoo-ha! There's your big body number. Hoo-ha! Yeah, I got to go with the hometown boy here, Brad Pitt. <laughs> Stop spitting on a man's back to fake orgasm. Brad Pitt, uh, I don't think, would be considered the definitive... Uh, American actor, but he is on that definitive, if you had to be with a guy list. <laughs> Normally, I think Brad Pitt's name yeah. would pop up there. He always is uh, tops on that list, I think. Yeah. I think he's number one on that list. Your list went on for pages and pages, I noticed. That was more of a book than a list. I like to have options sure. in case the Nazis get my mom and dad. There's no Nazis. We got rid of them in <laughs> 45. Uh, Diane, you're on Run of Fez. Yeah, I have to say Bill Murray is the best American actor. Where's your Ramon? Oh, uh, Ramon. <laughs> Fezzy's <he's> awesome. <laughs> Don't force her into it, even though I appreciated the compliment. She's a reverse pest. <laughs> she doesn't get the whole concept of being a pest. I'll tell you right now, if I was those pests, I'd send a bunch of pizzas to Fez's house. Don't send pizzas to my house. Don't give people ideas. Cheeseburgers? Fucking starving. What do we have? We got any cheeseburger pizzas, Earl? Uh, no, we just ran out. Why lie? I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. Anytime you ask for food, he always says we ran out. Earl, and give he me expects us to fall down last. Earl, give me a little energy. Oh, I'm giving you energy. No, now you are. That second. But before that, I had that, Earl. I have no idea, buddies. Whisper in Earl of the Pines. What, why are you upset, Earl? Your mommy and daddy fighting? No, I just got a phone call from from our uh, from our booker about a couple of things. I was well, a little distracted. Let me hear it. What happened? No, I mean, it's nothing bad. They're just trying to arrange for one of our guests to come in on Friday, and also they offered us a guest for what on, guest? Uh, um, Duff Goldman. Who's that? He's a he has a new show on the Food Network. He's kind of like a oh. rock and roll chef. What's that mean, rock and roll shit? I, I'm reading. I Does he just, work at the Hard Rock? He has a show called uh, Ace of Cakes coming out. Ace of Cakes? <laughs> How good that cake. tends to lose to Ace of Base. <laughs> I, I, this is what you work on during the show. I, I, no wonder you're depressed. No, I got you a know, phone call. You had to bring that hey, Duff he, Goldman name to me. Now, is. the thing is, we'll end, we'll end up being one of our favorite chefs. Right, yeah. No, I, did, like, I literally just got that call, so I was just... A little distracted. That's all. No. Why is I'm it sorry. distracting? You can't talk about cakes and run that booth all at the same time. He is the rock and roll chef, after all. I mean, he's the frosting kid. Eric, you're on running fez. Hey, I uh, just got to say, I don't blame Opie and uh, Norton. You know, Fez is a delicious looking man, and uh, it's easy to mistake his kindness for weakness. So that's going to happen. In his mind, I'm sure he thought that was a terrific call. Uh, Ray, Ray, you're on Ron Fez. Ray. Yeah, Ray? I guess. Yeah, Daniel Bay Lewis is a great actor. Is he American, my friend? Well, he... Ramon Bing Fez the Camel Ray? Be able to pull off the early part of the call <laughs> and then be funnier. All he wanted to do was get in his screaming, and he panicked throughout the whole thing. The voice was cracking once he went to his Ramon. What are you saying, all the pester pussies? I'm saying Ray is a screw-up. Wow. Shocking. Daniel Day-Lewis is Irish, too. I mean, Ray should have known that. Well, I think Ray was worried more about the Ramon part. Oh. Uh, Marty, you're on Run Fez. Yeah, that uh, Chef Duff. Yeah. He, he's the fucking man. He he uses power tools to make his cakes and stuff. He locks out to like Megadeth. He's pretty cool. You'd like him. 
Megadeth? Well, you know, he likes rock and roll music. He's, he's pretty hot. Sounds, oh. I mean, I, <laughs> wow. Sounds like he spits in the cake. <laughs> they all sounds like his cakes are going to fall if the Megadeth is playing in the bakery there. Here's uh, Greg. Greg, you're on Run Fez. Hey, I'm going to tell you what. Th these movies out there are really horrible. I'm going with the barnyard. I'm going to go with the cars. Ramon! Please give me a sidekick that doesn't have a cunt. Ouch. Ouch. I'm willing to weather the storm, Ronnie. I don't think it's going to stop this. I think you find yourself in the middle of a pest swarm. I think tonight... They're going to be sending medical supplies to your home on Roosevelt Island. I think you're going to open up the front door and there's going to be oxygen tents sent to you. And it's all going to be very, very difficult. And sooner or later, this is going to end with somebody getting killed. Maybe you. I don't want to see it go that far, obviously. But, uh, but things can't go on the same way they've been going on around here. What goes on in this office? No, I know that you said that you would uh, knock out Whackbag and that you were going to somehow get online and knock them offline. Right. Uh, they've set up a defense shield around it right now. You will not be able to get in there. Oh, well, we'll see about that. Fez is a computer expert. You can use my login if you'd like. And I'll tell you yeah. why I know he's a computer expert. He has AOL. Yeah. And I mean, like, the the 9.0 version, too. It's the Ron and Fez show. Uh, Ron is here. Fez is here. Hiya. And Fez, look who uh, came in, hopefully, with an olive uh, branch for you. It's Anthony. And my, Jesse Jackson. And my teeth. <laughs> an olive branch. Uh, yeah, just a little peace, peace gesture between the shows. That's nice. Although I know I didn't ever have a problem uh, with you guys. Well, never me. It's uh, you, of course, have always been there for Fez. Exactly. I appreciate that. And you respect people. You respect people at the job, the co-workers. You respect people's bodies, and that's what I appreciate. That's what I'm all about. Uh, I see, uh, diversity, anything like that. I Nothing bothers me like that. A lifestyle, mm -hmm. things like that, Doesn't, whatever, whatever you want to do. Gay Chinese guy, you don't care. I'm fine with it. No. I don't care. Yeah, That's and, nice. and and I just uh, I wanted to come in and, and uh, say I have no problem with you guys. Now, Opie, wow. Opie and Norton, you guys sort that out how you want. Right. I'm just here to say, you know, I'm fine with you guys. All right, that's beautiful, Fez. I appreciate that. I really do. I appreciate the fact that you can keep your hands to yourself. And divide and conquer. Nothing better than divide and conquer. <laughs> Whatever works. Right? That's exactly right. Pull them apart. Well, uh, Norton wasn't even there today. No, no. He's yeah. uh, off doing one of his ha-ha uh, funny shows. Yeah, somewhere. it's always whatever funny. That, whatever that is. Right. And from what I understand, Opie won't be in for the next week. Really? What are you saying? Exactly. I'm saying that when things got settled in HR, people can call things vacations right. all they want, when maybe it's more like a suspension. Suspension. Mm-hmm. And who's here? I am. You are here. I'm here. Where's Opie and Norton next week? Suspended. Suspended. Not here. I'm here, too, which shows yeah. that I wasn't suspended. or anything. Right. I'm glad management was able to see that. You know what? There's no reason for you to do the show all by yourself next week. That's too much. No, that's why I asked Elo if I could just <laughs> maybe take off some vacation time during, sure. during the suspension. And uh, he said, sure. I yeah. am so sorry you got caught up in this. Yeah. I didn't want to either, but uh, it's it's part of radio. We all know it. You Someone... know, people that are your friends... Turn around the next day, the knife is in the back. Grab sure. ass should not be part of radio. Not it out always has way. been. During, <laughs> wait, wait a minute. During my whole career. Maybe in here, yeah. when the mics are on, right. when the on-air light is lit, mm. but not out in that hallway, not up against the lockers. And obviously with listeners. Oh, yeah. Uh, always. Yeah. We've always had that you know, pair of who tickets on our cock. How are you going to win these, <laughs> honey? How are you going to win these? I'd be single if you couldn't grab ass with the listeners. Oh, yeah. It would be impossible. <laughs> you would never date. You would never know women. Jesus. It's just terrible. Uh, wasn't Opie uh, drunk coming in this morning? Or there was a rumor that he was drunk? Uh, things are being said. Uh, yeah. Different uh, lifestyle, I guess. I don't know. I've yeah. never seen him like that. But, yeah, 
Yeah, people smelling booze on his breath, uh, slurring his words. Why can't Fez seem to fit in? I know it's wherever we go, uh, Fez never gets the opportunity to sit at the cool table. I'm a nice enough guy. You are. You're good people. I'm always there. Yeah. Always being tripped walking by the cool table. Yeah. Food ends up on the floor. He's got to clean it up as everyone laughs. My book's knocked out of my hand. All the time. I just got to quit carrying books. There's not even any need for them here. Why don't we do this? Yeah, why do you come to here <laughs> to work with books? <laughs> That's a problem. Well, he carries them across his chest. I, I, I knocked a biology that. book out of yeah. his hand. It's like radio. Yeah. He doesn't need it anymore. Uh, why don't we do this, Fez? Why don't you have a meltdown panic attack in front of Anthony so he sees that I don't make this shit up? <laughs> because listening, you really get the impression that it's a theater of the mind. Right. And here goes a panic attack. You think it's back and you're going to ride a horse away on, uh, and, and have some coconuts on the uh, console to make little uh, sounds? I'm not creating a Foley studio. A Foley my, studio, that's for it. For my panic attack. Look, thunder. <laughs> a big piece of sheet metal. That makes me nervous. That could be Earl's job over there. And then the dog came in. Woof, woof. <laughs> uh, no, uh, why don't you do that thing where you get your papers mixed up oh, and then no. it looks like you're going to faint. And just... <laughs> oh, That's awful. No. Does he actually almost fall <laughs> off yeah. his chair? And... He starts all that and then I have to do the old, yeah, exactly, Fez. I won't look at him oh. until he settles himself like his cock accidentally popped out. <laughs> Here's how you know it starts. <laughs> when I take both hands... And latch onto the tabletop. You gotta here. grab. Yeah. yeah, because if I don't, it'll take off like a spaceship <laughs> with me dangling on the outside oh, is of that it. it. Do you get really like bad ones? I used to back in my twenties and stuff. I used to get. I mean, this was right after I stopped doing coke. Right, that's always a problem. Which, Coming off any drug is a huge know, problem. Uh, alcohol. Yeah. And one day I'm walking home. I, I I took off the day from work because I was drunk the day before. Of course, mm -hmm. I was so hungover that I had to uh, take off of work. And I decided to go to the corner deli, get myself a big hero uh, sandwich. And I'm walking back to the house, and I looked at my arm and the bag that it was holding, and it was like that doesn't look like my arm, like it's connected right. to me. And then all of a sudden, I just whoosh, cold sweat shakes, lost my mind, had a complete panic attack. And that lasted for eight years of just waking up going, well, am I going to have one today? Yeah. This is going to be grand. <laughs> and then one day, I just said, like, you know something? Fuck it. Whatever's going to happen, if I'm going to go crazy and in my underwear, run out in the street, pulling my hair, I'm going, woohoo, woohoo. Whatever's going to happen, happen. Go ahead, do it. And when it didn't happen... Uh, you started getting over it, and that was it. You know, the, the weirdest thing, because I went and read about this stuff before, if you try to bring it on, if you try to make it even more powerful, it'll go away. Yeah. So it's it's really about holding on to yeah, time. Right. Try yeah. to empower it, right. and it'll go away, because it, it's never as strong as you think it is. Yeah. And then when you sit there and you're afraid of it all day, that's when it creeps up, and he goes, hey, how you doing, buddy? I'm back. <laughs> Start shaking. Yeah, because I never know really when it's going to happen. I know right now. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> Kidding. Hold on. Is this room even moving? See? Oh, it feels see? like it's moving. See? see? Who smells smoke? Oh, calm sweat. How could we get out of here? What if we needed to get out of here? Can we? Yeah, we can. <laughs> oh, we would boy. go down the stairs if we had to. Do you get that? Not with a locked door. <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> Just check it to see if it's open. <laughs> and did you lock your door at home? I... <laughs> I think I did, but it's locked, but I don't know if it's pulled two all the way. This is your uh, Fez's latest one, which is my new favorite, is he wants to be home by dark. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I had one. It usually happens on Sunday night. Mm -hmm. I get that. Su that's when it's the worst, when the sun starts to go down on Sunday. <laughs> it's the next day's work. Exactly. Yeah, which isn't work, but it's kind of like you have something you have to do. You can't just spend it in bed. It's the school feeling. Right. Uh -huh. It's the school tomorrow. Sunday's feeling. bad. Yeah. Well, that was the seed that this beautiful panic plant has grown <laughs> from, because now it's just about any night. I had one last night. Oh, it was, no. I think it was like 730, and I looked outside my window and just started freaking and losing it. Uh, for what reason? I have no idea. I have no idea other than the fact that I looked outside. Yeah. See, that's what makes me crazy. So you need like a, a, a like Vulcan, a planet of dual suns. <laughs> nice. Yes. Where it's light all the time. If we can only get you to Vulcan. <laughs> or let's get you a miner's hat where you just constantly, <laughs> it seems light for you. 
he so he calls me one night and he goes uh, something's going on with the trains I can't get home and I'm like uh, well you know you're gonna get there buddy I'm just on the <laughs> phone with him and he goes yeah but it's getting dark I won't be home and it'll be dark oh, no. and I go does that mean mom's not gonna give you dessert come on Fez you're <laughs> yeah, running yeah. the show here you must this just is... be sick of it right <laughs> yeah it <laughs> is it is I was telling him it doesn't the other... help I was telling I'm him just the other saying thing. at first he's probably very sympathetic but now he's just sick of it yeah right. after years uh, it gets to that point like if you're forced to take care of your grandmother for years and mm-hmm. years and years and she's bedridden and you do it and you're, you're cleaning her and you're feeding her and after a while you just start slapping her you just can't <laughs> help it you blame her for everything yeah and then like uh, later the hospice people are going why is there a cigarette burn on her foot oh and it started out with good <laughs> intentions I could have got married and I could have <laughs> had a family of my own it just ends with her bent old nose <laughs> under the pillow after you've pushed it to her face Gasping for my last breath. Yeah. All right, eight years, Fran. How long have you been uh, dealing with this, Fez? I would say probably 13. Yeah. Oh, my God. See? Now, after a while. Yeah. But you got a few more of those issues, like the locked door or did I leave this on? Anytime I think when I leave for, like, vacation, we're going on vacation, and yeah. it's natural when you pull away to think, ah, did I leave the light on or the, the stove even or this or that? I just go, you know what? Whatever happens, I'll just buy another one. Right. I don't care. Whatever happens. The house burned down. Ah, we'll get another one. I got insurance. My problem Doesn't with matter. that is, um, like, if I'm worried that the door's unlocked, mm-hmm. you would think I would remember to lock it. I've gone back on more than one occasion, and yes, it's been and it's unlocked. unlocked. Probably because you've been worrying about other things when you should have been locking the door. <laughs> I have left the stove on. That it's getting dark out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have to worried go about that. It's dark. I only have probably about another six, seven hours here. <laughs> he lives do a- you do that? You look at the <laughs> clock and go, oh, it's going to get dark. It's oh, a vampire world. You poor bastard. And I got to be in. This is why Opie's harassment and teasing and your little pests, it's not helpful for him. No, not somebody in your yeah. delicate mental state. No, no. It's, w- it's one more thing that I don't need to worry about. I think I should c- uh, call off any pest attacks on Fezzi because it's not uh, healthy. Oh, like Fez said, they're a bunch of faggots anyway. He don't care. I heard some of the stuff he was saying about faggots. They don't have the balls to right. come after him. He lives on Roosevelt Island in yeah. the Manhattan uh, building. Yeah, a lot of that I was just saying to the guys in the back after the show. <laughs> right. But the point and is, it's said. Yeah. Fez, why don't you try to break out for everybody? That's always my uh, other favorite. When all of a sudden I look over and for no reason you have a huge rash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you'll get a rash. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, that I could probably produce just sitting here now. Like, like if I was an X Men, lucky me, that would be my mutant power. <laughs> Rash man. One day he was having an extra bad sh- uh, show, and the, nothing was just working. And I look over, and he's got his, his <laughs> shoulder <laughs> exposed, and it's just like the car. Ha- look, I right, turn around now to oh, see no. how it's just starting to pop out. Yes, yeah, I think he little like blotchy it. thing. That'll go yeah. all the way down to his belt. For no apparent reason. Nothing, just nerves. Yeah, and my fingers will swell up with hives. <laughs> They'll be like big, giant uh, hive bumps in between my fingers. Wow, that's fucked up. Yeah. Any of the sweatiest part of my body's pot, uh, my body will yeah. break out first. And we'll just sweat a lot, underarms. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. soaks. Yeah. We're going to have to put them away. Yeah, are, they, are, they, are you doing anything? I mean, you seeing anyone? I don't mean... You know, relationship. Bro. Oh, that is just no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they could end up seeing his penis. That's the big, that's the other problem we have. No one's seeing the penis. <laughs> no one. <laughs> the cardiologist that I go to since the heart attack, he has said three times now, I think I really need to recommend a psychiatrist for you. See, if, if he's saying that, maybe he knows best. And just sitting down chatting with somebody might help out. But I've been to the shrinks. Yeah. You know, I've taken all the pills. All the See, pills. That's not, uh, what about this? A vacation <laughs> from your problems. Vacation from my problems. I liked Ronnie's whole logic that this is your movie. Right. This is your. You're the writer, director, and starring in it. And villain. And and, and villain. <laughs> yeah, he's after himself. Right. And the villain is winning. <laughs> The villain's kicking your ass. It doesn't have a happy ending. Yeah, the Death Star doesn't blow up oh. in my movie. But haven't you <laughs> met people that don't have shit going, but they're overly confident? You know what I mean? And they're just having the best time through life. Don't you envy those people? Yeah. Yeah, they. Ex- it's almost like they're too dumb to realize how shitty their life envy is. Envy the stupid. Right. Yes. 
ignorance is bliss. You've heard it for years, and it is so true to be so stupid that you're just happy with a cold beer and a weekend. You're oh, right. Wonderful. It Ignorance is bliss. See, that's the problem now that I don't drink. What is a Friday to me? It nothing. is nothing. Yeah. This used to be the thing to happen. Friday. Friday. Couldn't wait for it. What'd you do? Cigarettes, a little whiskey, <laughs> some drugs, and you just forget everything until Monday morning when maybe you make it into work. But that weekend was what you worked for. That was it. Now it might as well be a Tuesday. Who cares? Trying to find the perfect high, the oh. exact perfect <laughs> place before you're too drunk or too stoned. Right. Just what would it take? Is it eight beers, two joints, and a volume? What exactly <laughs> is it? That combination would <laughs> yeah. have to be perfect. <laughs> right. And you know how some people said, well, I experimented with drugs. I really did. I really <laughs> tried to come out to go, where is that? Blissful you crunched feeling. numbers and yes. there was documentation. The fucking lab coat on. I was just. <laughs> I really. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And no one, you know, all the studies that we do, no one's ever come up with the perfect tie. No, no uh, corporation or government team, no college have ever said, here's the exact perfect high and there could be mixtures like yeah. we were talking about like yeah you could have uh four beers and that right. seems like nothing but mixed with some valium right a xanax a few of these things now you got a problem right yeah but but uh then you could do maybe uh 12 beers nothing else yeah and that's fine and yeah, and but does it sustain? That's the problem. You ever just have that perfect high, and it either drops down a little too low, or you go overboard. And you got to bring it back. And start hugging your friends. You know what I mean? You don't know where. Yeah. You can't keep it. It's like uh, you're just teetering. You can't time. stop drinking. No. There's no way when you start drinking, you can't stop and go. I'm going to stop for an hour. Right. And then I'll resume. Yeah. You've got to constantly have the drink in your hand, pounding it down. So that's why you end up, I can sit back tonight. Right. I love you, man. Yeah. All just, you know. Yeah. You fucking know. <laughs> I can tell you. And have you ever drank yourself sober? Where it's been like an all-day drinking marathon, and you've heard about that, but you're drinking, and all of a sudden you just don't feel it anymore. Yeah, you, when the sun comes up, though. The, yeah, the sun comes up. The horrible feeling of the sun coming up. One time, I came out of a blackout. So it's like suddenly, like normally, you're like, "Hey, I woke up. What did I do last night?" I was at that point without falling asleep. Yeah. And it was and I guess cuz I got shocked back into it because I'm driving on the sidewalk of the street <laughs> oh, no, next to this girl one. who's crying and screaming <laughs> going you got to kill us. And I'm like, "Whoa, Moment what the fuck? Let me move this over. What exactly happened? Could you fill me in on the past <laughs> few miles?" Oh, yeah, it was pretty terrible. I, I tequila is one of those things where if you've studied tequila and other drugs and yeah. alcohol and stuff, you really don't need much of anything else. Yeah. Like Valium or anything. Tequila on It its is own a little more like a drug will than screw alcohol. You up. Yeah. And I was drinking that one night and uh this was one of the very few blackouts that I had. Woke up. I was home, but I was on the bathroom floor and uh I had gotten sick. And have no recollection of leaving the bar. Yeah. Getting home. Uh, I apparently drove myself home because my vehicle was parked slightly askew. Sure. Uh, and I noticed that the next morning. But you wake up and go, how? What happened? It's like a time machine. Yeah, it is. It's like you just went into a time machine and you you ended up where you were when you woke up. Frightening. And I do think you preserve those. I think that extends your life. I think you get that time back oh, at the end of your life. <laughs> so any blackout time that you got is really like it's not even being time. alive. Yeah, it's your stoppage time, like yeah. in a soccer game. That's handy. How could it even happen? How could you black out that you're actually going around doing? You're things, doing stuff, but the no record whatsoever. No recollection of yeah. it. Yeah, but it's not like you forget the English language or how to walk. <laughs> you are obviously <laughs> talking with people. You're making deals. You're half running the time. <laughs> Machinery. I fucking sold a car one time. <laughs> Didn't remember it. <laughs> Tried to park. Maybe that's why the memory, they say the memory's the first thing to go. Who Ma says that? That's an old saying. You like when people get old. But you said this like 15 minutes ago. You what? You fucking saying it over and over. <laughs> Itchy. Huh? Right already. Itchy. <laughs> <sighs> 
No one else is breaking out in here. Hive man. <laughs> well, no. you're, you're not a blackout guy. You never were really a hard liquor drinker. No, no. It was always mostly beer with me. Beer and yeah. Mai Tais. Yeah, exactly. Fruit drinks. Oh. Bikini teenies. That sort of thing. <laughs> Those are cute. Cosmo. Exactly. Fell into that stereotype, did you? <laughs> 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 Nothing worse than trying to attain the coke high that you got off the first Can't two be done. or hit if you were smoking it or anything. Uh, the, the first one's just like, all Perfect. right, best drug ever. Right. It's the greatest thing ever. You start coming down off it. It's like, okay, all you got to do is another hit. And it's just like that again. No, it's yeah. not. Uh, now I'm out and uh, the whole night is attributed to finding more or picking up pretzel uh, salt in your carpet thinking that that is a piece of it. Yeah. The it's worst terrible. drug Ever, and the most magnificent. It is true. The, the first blast, you finally feel like I I understand. I got it, it now. I know what are you, I, you you're maintaining perfectly. Mm -hmm. You couldn't be nicer to people. You're just like <laughs> how's everyone? Is everyone doing great? We're gonna have a wonderful, wonderful evening here, and it doesn't matter who you're with. You yeah. know, I've been in fucking places with you know pedophile bikers. And just, <laughs> hey guys, this is great. <laughs> it's yeah. great to see you guys. It's great. And then as, yeah. as the pile goes down and gets yeah. a little smaller, people start looking at you like, yeah. I think it's my turn. Right. Oh, no, no. You just, you, yeah. it was the last time around, you got the last one. Now, no, no. You did a longer mm -hmm. one. Than I, and then before you know it, uh, you, you're not with friends anymore. No, you're you're locked in a bathroom with them banging on the door <laughs> going, you fucker, <laughs> you animal. <laughs> And meanwhile, you're in there doing it, and I know there's cops outside because I oh. see a car driving back and forth. Awful. Awful, awful feeling. Awful, wonderful times. A whippet is a perfect high, but you get it for like five seconds. And then the headache comes. Yeah. Then and you, you get ice cream, and now it's just some goopy white stuff <laughs> right. on it because you ruined it. You've ruined your whipped cream. Yeah. Uh, a whippet's <laughs> for me, uh, that's for 15-year-olds. That's yeah. for, you know. Let the kids enjoy that. Uh, glue fucking sniffers. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to be like girl walking around the neighborhood with the big glue ring around my <laughs> neck, my face anymore. <laughs> nothing beats that on cops. What are you doing now? What are you doing? Now? Nothing. The guy's got like this glowing silver <laughs> ring around his face. It's like a Fred Flintstone <laughs> face all of a sudden. Yeah, Homer Simpson. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? Oh, nothing. Yeah, I've been, uh, what's the paint cans that around you? I don't know. What's the paint around your face? Not me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Earl, what's happening right now in, in your neighborhood? What are the black kids up to? Because hmm. that's what the rest of us will be doing in six months. Uh, it's still good old fashioned crack. No, it hasn't crack. been crack in a while, or like the '80s. Yeah. No, what was crack? Oh, absolutely. No, it, you're it's, still uh, it's kind of going crack. underground, but it's definitely still there. No, it's totally going underground. But um, as far as drinking, it's um, Cavassier still. <laughs> yeah, it's still like the the quasi exotic drinks. You know, like yeah. a lot of like a, a lot of bourbons, a lot of scotches. They try to come off as exotic drinks. They like to feel important. Yeah. Like they're closing a big business deal. They love to overpay for champagne. <laughs> <laughs> That's the big thing. The Why Cristal. Is that? Yeah, Cristal. Now there is a uh, there's a place in Manhattan selling Cristal for six thousand dollars a bottle. I got to get me that. I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand, you know, when you're drug dealing, you go through that money faster than if you've earned it. But still, somebody's laughing at you if you spent six thousand oh, dollars for a yeah. bottle. Of champagne. That's not making you, you look good. Yeah, um, Jay-Z's place, uh, the 4040 Club, they'll have it in a case. And you have to have, like, armed guards kind of with special keys open the uh, liquor cabinet to get this exotic, I guess, exotic Mine. crystal. And, yeah. and I'm like, it, it's alcohol. It's like, it's not... It's not a diamond. It's alcohol. What's the big deal about it? You know, I. It's insane to have a night. Uh, Earl doesn't drink. I don't drink, but I'm like, I would never ever pay six hundred dollars for a bottle of Cristal six or thousand. even or six thousand. That's insane. I don't care how much money. I have you ever even tasted a drink, Earl? Have you ever had a beer? Yeah, of course. But you didn't like it. You didn't like the high, or um, it just I didn't like the taste. It just wasn't me at all, and and my family. Fun. When no, you, yeah, was it exciting, <laughs> right. fun to talk to? <laughs> no, and then the other part is, I guess my family comes, my family is a long line of alcoholics. Well, also. wait, hold on, let me pick my jaw up off the fucking ground. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead. And you want to break that? <laughs> At least for me, because it's one of those deals where 
they they're just they cannot stop drinking. Once they start, they will they cannot stop yeah, it's until it's called drinking. Right. No, I mean, it's just but, called drinking. No, but I mean to the point of there is nothing else important. Yes, whether drinking. it's pissing, <laughs> whether right. it's sleeping, whether it's they don't yeah. piss again. Drinking. <laughs> no, no I mean, one drinks like James Bond. You know, right. no one goes in, has a martini, puts it down, and then just goes about their business. When you start drinking, yeah. you're drinking for the night. You're d until you pass out, go to sleep, whatever you're doing that stops you physically from drinking. That's when, when you stop. When you're uh, around like 9 o'clock in the morning waiting for it to be okay to sell beer again, one of those deals. <laughs> right. So you're sitting in the parking lot of a 7-Eleven <laughs> trying to deal with whatever blue laws. <laughs> just yelling to the guy, you open? Yeah. <laughs> Archaic, ridiculous. Look. You ever walk in on a Sunday just forgetting what day it is, yeah. bring up a six-pack and go, here? oh, no, it's, oh, oh son Jesus. of a bitch. Dude, look, I'll give you $50 for this uh, six-pack. No, no. Blue laws. The uh, the sun coming up is the also the worst thing that can happen to you mm -hmm. when you're drinking. I, I talked about this before. I had this experience that everyone's been through it where you've been out all night, you're getting wired, you're drunk off your ass, and then you're heading home and like the sun's up and you got yesterday's clothes on. <laughs> Suddenly, you just feel filthy. And one time, I'm sitting at a red light. I'm just feeling terrible. And I look over and I see these little kids. Uh, waiting for their school bus, and they were just so fresh and alive. <laughs> and I just looked so you had like to kill him. the Jean Benet killer. I'm just, I'm like fucking Aqualung. I'm just all is, and I'm like that could, probably was me once before I became the I beast. Was young. <laughs> Can't look in the rearview mirror. No, hell no. <laughs> You're just filthy. It's just all last night's stank. Yeah. It's just all over you. You can just feel the toxins coming through your skin. You ever just boot out the door? You just open the door up and <laughs> yeah. just bleh. You're just throwing up as you're driving? Right. Yeah. This is fantastic. <laughs> it's daylight out. You're throwing up as you're driving. Makes you feel great. You got the cold, hot sweats. You know, you put the heat and the air conditioning on. Oh, is that horrid. And you're at that low of a point, but yet you hope that the other drivers think you just have the flu. And we're, yeah. And we're trying to be a trooper, make it into work anyway. I'll just <laughs> hot coffee is pouring out so it doesn't <laughs> spill on his lap. No, he's vomiting. I'll just yell, "Don't look at me, I'm hideous." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> it's horrible. And then that night. Yeah. He'll hair of the dog. Hair of the dog. You forget everything that happened. You could feel like crap. And then yeah. one beer later, it's like, how was I feeling so bad? Right. That's when you know it's an addiction. Yeah. When you need that, whatever it is, that drug thing, to get back to where yeah. a normal person Why would I feel. feel so bad? Yeah. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Like, the cells in your body start to go, each one separately, once that... Drug, that alcohol, whatever it is, something in your body's doing it's not fault. doing its job. Yeah, yeah, it's just craving it. Going, Screw yeah. you! Give me a drink, or I'm not delivering oxygen to this <laughs> organ. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody who uh, you know fucking skin pops heroin, you're just fucking enjoying it for a while, and then later you're like, uh, oh, I think I have a flu. I didn't, do any, uh, you know, it's weird. I haven't done heroin in a couple of days, and I got this really bad cold. <laughs> no one that does heroin. Yeah. That's one thing I've never. Never touch. Only the fun drugs. A little Coke, some right. mescaline was always fun. Sure. Uh, but heroin, no one that uses heroin ever looks like they're enjoying it. It no. definitely looks like something they have to do in right. order to just live. When you talk to a junkie, he always needs to talk to somebody else besides you right. as quick as he can. Yeah. He's always waiting for a <laughs> phone call. There's some guy who there's a car that he's waiting to come by. He's never, he doesn't own his own time anymore. No. It's constantly something has to happen. Right. It's the worst. That's the all-time worst. Although, without a doubt, the all-time high. I swear her uh, heaven feels exactly like heroin. That's what everybody says. Yeah. Yeah, that's why people get uh, so hooked on it. Even, uh, you know, celebrities just throw everything away. Right. Uh, people will flush down family, yeah. friends, houses, businesses, everything. Everything's just gone. for that feeling. Right. Which is just really odd. Because it's really the feeling everyone's working for and can't get to. Right. <laughs> so yeah. the thing is, the first thing that you mumble after doing heroin is, can we get any more? <laughs> is there more? 
I mean, when your spine turns to cotton, everything's going. You finally feel like a stuffed animal. Yeah. You become a plushie. You're just it's everything you want it to be. We were taught to go to heaven. Yeah. And, you know, they've never tried to figure out, like, if how to have some drugs that help you doing other drugs. I mean, we have these large drug companies. Mm -hmm. They've never come up with anything that helps you if you're doing acid and you, you want to get out of it real quick. You know, if you're tripping, hey, yeah. there could be some kind of a quick homesick pill. <laughs> yeah, home. one of those. I'm out. Uh, hey, I'm back. Having a bad trip. <laughs> Boom. You pop that. You're done. You're out. Wouldn't that be phenomenal? Then you could do anything. Yeah. Anything. You could... Do heroin, and right. then, yeah, this wow, this is really weird, but yeah. i got to go to work in five minutes. <laughs> Boom, you're would done. That would be the best. That would be the drug company of drug companies. Why aren't then? you working for Pfizer instead of doing uh, Just brainstorming. Show? Just brainstorming for Pfizer. You'd be in a room right now, and people would be rubbing their chins going, a drug that yeah. takes care of other drugs. <laughs> This is brilliant, Mr. Benick. I can't believe it. I think outside the box when it comes to a lot of <laughs> yeah. this stuff. The hour after pill. Yeah. And I think the problem is, is no matter how long I've been clean, I still think, is there a way? Is <laughs> there something. a possible way? Because something tells me these ideas come from the necessity is the mother of invention thing, right. where if you had something like this, right. you could go back to... Uh, and try bringing that up in an N.A. meeting. Hey, is there any drug <laughs> that anyone knows about? Any drug at all? Oh, look at this fucking guy. Oh, the yeah. The Jean Benet yeah. fake pants. killer. John you, Carr. You, you called this one yesterday yeah. that this guy is faking it. Look, at he couldn't pull this off. Look at him. He just wanted to be the most popular boy in Thailand. He certainly <laughs> did, and he pulled that off. They're all talking about him. He looks like a snake wearing high pants. His whole body doesn't work. <laughs> What a creep. Yeah, what a he is. ghoulish looking guy. Yeah. Just fixated on this child murder thing. He moved to where uh where Polly uh, class Yeah, was, Polly class, uh, yeah. Was murdered. He moved to her hometown, had uh, copies of her death certificate. Oh, that's weird. We just look into child murders. Just a weird creep who decided, uh, yeah, I'm going to cop to this one. But, you know, there's a whole industry, and I have friends who are like, they'll read any murder book, any s serial killer, and I'm like, People what, are, fascinated you, with what are you getting out of this? And People this are like, fascinated. Oh, I want to know how the brain works. I want to know Stop. what goes to his <laughs> mind. You're titillated, yeah, a little right. excited <laughs> about it. I watch all those shows on uh, uh, A&E. You know, this uh, murder of a housewife right. in a small town. <laughs> and they get the guy and they run through everything in the murder. And I'm watching those fascinated by it. And I don't know why I'm drawn to those things. They they creep me out. They're creepy. Right. But you got to kind of watch. It's like, oh, look at that. Bite marks on her tit. That's uh, fascinating. And then you find yourself going like, ooh, that's kind of <laughs> it's kind of hot. Right. And they show like the morgue picture where her face is blurred out. But they show the bite mark on a tit. And you're like, ooh, you get a little tingle. Yeah. That's sick. I remember being a kid reading Helter Skelter and just being caught up on it for yeah. a little while. Like, oh, man, look at this guy. He had a bunch of chicks. Yeah. Uh, guys would kill for him. Kill for the guy. R writing shit on the wall and freaking out the straights. People it's a weird thing, yeah. It. And I think that's what this guy is, just one of those freaky guys that decided, I got to get out of Thailand before they cut my balls off. Yeah, smart move when so you I'll think about getting this. out of Thailand. Brilliant. Yeah. Get me over to Boulder, yeah. where I'll be in a jail and be able to look at the Rockies out the window. <laughs> <laughs> have nice cool air coming yeah. in. Nice they, view. He doesn't have somebody smacking him. Mao! Mao! <laughs> They said six years ago when he got picked up in California on those kitty porn charges when yeah. he was a school teacher, whatever. A school teacher for the eighth time. Yeah, they um, he ha he called his dad because he had been arrested and told his dad, even though it was kitty porn charges, I've been arrested in the uh, murder of Jean Benet Ramsey. Yeah, he said that back in like two thousand one. Yeah, or something. Yeah, when so he got five years for ago, that. he was claiming he was copping he to this. it then. He's a poser. This guy's <laughs> fucking not the yeah. real deal. Everybody's writing that guy who's like, yeah, well, I helped write Stairway to Heaven. It never happened. <laughs> this did. guy's a liar. <laughs> now, what was the, uh, he, they just found him with pictures or he was a kid toucher? I thought it was something on his computer. Okay. Yeah, that's what yeah. I thought. So he had never really crossed any lines before. As far as they know, he taught, though, in so many nations that are just known for uh Kitty, oh, kid so like in Costa Rica and yeah, yeah. you go down to these South American countries. <laughs> yeah. He was in Korea for a while and then Thailand. You know, right? You're going to Thailand. You're not going to the. I don't think there's a Disney there. When you go to Thailand, it is to have sex with children or bring drugs back. 
Yeah. There's no other reason to go there. I love to. Oh, the scuba diving's great. Go to the Bahamas. First of all, is there any reason for a man to be a third grade teacher unless he wants to be a kid toucher? Exactly. It, how could a man stand that? Situations, yeah. No man could sit there all day with children trying to teach them things that would drive you insane. Drive you crazy. He never got fired from any of these teaching jobs for anything inappropriate, yeah. except that they said he would hug the children too much. A little too much. He was too uh, intimate with the children. Now, can you imagine turning on the TV and seeing your kid's old teacher fucking <laughs> oh, in this thing? Just wondering you what would happened. You'd be losing it. There's Mr. Carr. Oh, hey, what's God. he on the news for? Did he win an award for teaching? Oh, he killed Jean Benet. So he says. <laughs> My seventh grade teacher uh, turned out to be a kid toucher. Took a couple kids from the class bowling. Really? Played with their balls. <laughs> nice. And became a big. Uh, and, and this was like at the time where it didn't even make the paper. He was just let go. And yeah, you know, if we bring this up, it'll hurt the children. It's going to be an embarrassment. Yeah, it'll be an embarrassment involved. to the kids. And I remember thinking, uh, what's wrong with me? What is so fucking hideously ugly about me? Didn't that take he's not, you? Yeah, he's not interested. I'm never going to fucking date. That's, That's all that goes through my mind. <laughs> That's got to We had the guidance counselor in high school who was also the women's tennis coach. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. And he was let go uh, when he was found with the girls' tennis team socks. He was collecting. And Sock fucker? Yeah. Socks. Yeah. What? You can't even say it, can you? <laughs> so it is. The yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sock fucker. He is. Yes. Sock fucker. Sock fucker. <laughs> so it, uh, and the, he was bachelor in her socks. Yeah, yeah. I think they caught him in the locker room or his office or something like that. Was it high school? High school. High school girl socks. Yeah. Something a little. <laughs> something a little nice about that. I don't know what it is, but where's Mr. Zof? Didn't process it yet, but probably shouldn't have said that name. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> never say a name. Did you really? Was that the real name? Yeah. All right. That's a mistake. I didn't say the first name. <laughs> Mister. Everybody knows Mister. Knows Zof. him now. Yeah. Coach. Right now, he's calling uh, Elo as we speak. <laughs> Those charges were never proven. <laughs> it wasn't socks. It was tennis skirts. Sick fucking world. I can understand panties or something, but socks. It's a little weird. How about trying to get what's in the panties and socks? Why don't you make the move up and, uh, you know, go for it here. Try to find out what they wear this for. Because no one is ever interested in guys' underwear or socks. You never see a woman go, hey, I've got to have guys' socks. No, guys are always the weirdos when it yeah. comes to that stuff. It's usually like the – when you do read about uh, girls that are uh, not even abused, they're talking about actually dating or going out. It's usually the cool janitor, like the young right. guy who was the, the, the dropout, the loser, but had like the cool car or something, and, and now he's the janitor at the school. Yeah. <laughs> he's the guy that the girls actually have sex with. Right, that's with no true. no problem. Uh, there was always those girls in, like, 8th, ninth grade that had matured faster than us guys, you know? And then, like, some guy would drive up in a vet and pick them up while oh. the rest of us were riding bikes. <laughs> 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 then by 10th grade, she was already pregnant now. She was You're just, just done. gone, yeah. Not, it, not a chance. I remember yeah, if, if a guy had, um, had one of these real hopped-up El Caminos, yeah. it was over. She had to sit next to him. <laughs> sure. only two seats. You're there on your bicycle, locking up your bike at the bike rack. <laughs> Telling your friends that he's a jag-off. Yeah. <laughs> Is he the jag-off? Yeah, guy. <laughs> <sighs> but then you never want to be that guy who goes back to the school and picks up the girls. That's got to be a fucking hideous nah, feeling. Nah, that's got to be bad. Yeah. What, I did that? Yeah, I was a little old at one point. <laughs> really? I, w I was about 20. Yeah. And, and uh, I was going out with a girl that was 16. Yeah. And uh, she was uh, 15 going on 16. So oh, I had to go. Okay. I had That's to go. arrestable at this point. It is arrestable. But yes. again, it was that time. Yeah, you right. know, ah, it's okay. My car's got the same thing. <laughs> John Carr. <laughs> <laughs> the same was... thing in his bio. <laughs> I had to actually go as the boyfriend uh, to a sweet 16 party when I was 20 years old. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> this was embarrassing yeah. as hell. Uh, and, and, you know, the father is there mm -hmm. and it was just one of those situations where he's just leering at me, you son of a bitch, <laughs> fouling my daughter. <laughs> and he knew there was no way he could say anything to her cause that would just make it worse. So he drove me home, had a little talk with me on the way oh, home, geez. had to have that talk 
about how he's not going to sit and st- uh, sit by as his daughter gets uh, screwed up because of the likes of me. And and I'm just like, yeah, okay. Whatever. He never knew at the times, too. Every weekend he would drive her to the house where we would have, like, parties and stuff at the house. He'd drive her to the house at, uh, at 9 o'clock. She had to be picked up by 11. And there was nothing but fucking going on in between. It was like he was one of those guys that drove the stripper over the house. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll sit out in the car, honey. Whenever you're ready, knock. If there's trouble, let me know. I'll be. That's what he, the father was. Oh, and the same name as the gym teacher there, uh, Mr. Uh, Z? Yeah. Mr. Uh, Coach Z. I teasing, swear. Uh, teasing, of course. Oh, no. <laughs> Fucking cell for a glass sinker. What is with that family? Yeah, there's something crazy <laughs> going down. Z. Something insane. <laughs> it's a tough old world back then. It was embarrassing, though, being at that Sweet 16, because she started crying about something. Yeah. It was really like a, That's when I really thought, look... I got to step up at least a couple of years. Because right. My days of dating uh, girls uh, 16 and under are so far <laughs> gone. Because she's crying about like she didn't get a present she wanted. It was one of those. <laughs> it wasn't even like something. And she's like, I didn't ask for this one. I asked for the blue one. And you got the red one, Mom. Mom. And I'm there going, oh, my God, this is my girlfriend. And I work for a living. I have a job. I... I I don't live at home anymore. I, I have a car. I oh, it was awful. Yeah, uh, actually, the worst thing about being a kid toucher would be having to talk to him after. <laughs> That's this, pretty much. Yeah, no shared interest. Once you're done raping them, <laughs> yes. Why? The news is on. Then you just feel bad. <laughs> yeah. and, and you can't talk to him. Yeah. Here's yeah. the juice box. Yeah. What do you think I should do uh, with uh, my assets here? I'm a little too liquid. Uh, <laughs> bonds. What are you doing with your money? Stop uh, the jumping piggy on bank? the bed. Stop yeah. jumping on the fucking bed. I'm serious. Remember how, like, when you were a kid, that's all you wanted to do was jump on the bed? You couldn't understand? And then the minute you have your own kids, you fucking hate them jumping on the bed. Them jumping on you the just bed. completely flip the script and go from no. No one ever jumps on a bed. What is that? Yeah. You're going to ruin this bed. Yeah. You're furious at the fact that someone's jumping. But when you're a kid, I love jumping on the fucking bed. Who didn't? Yeah. As a kid, you couldn't understand it. There is something bouncy in this house, and yet you can't jump on it. Well, you know, in a way, that kind of, and I think it has to do with being high, getting high because you're trying to change your state, and the adults see it, and they don't like it. That's why they don't like to see you turn around. You spin don't, around. You, you spin the around. original buzz. Yeah, and that's like a quick buzz, and you're like, yay, and the adults completely scream at you right from the word get. That was like a condensed version of being drunk. You'd, you'd start spinning, right. it would build up, you'd feel really cool and weird, and then sick in the matter of, like, 15 seconds. Fall down. A whole yourself. night drinking. Yeah, fall down, hurt yourself. Hurt yourself real bad. <laughs> and you got that hangover feeling when right, you're when done. You're right. Will feel I ever good. feel good again? <laughs> And then you're ready to spin an hour later. Yeah, you, then you spin and again. Yeah, like, yeah, let's get back. And it's more fun to do with your friends. Like, you never spin alone. No. You spin when you're with spin, your buddies. See if you could walk to a certain location. You're falling all over laughing. Just loving having it. Having fun. And loving seeing your friends in that state. Yeah. Look at him fall down. It's the original buzz as a kid. Yeah. You could do it at five. Yeah, you Doesn't can. matter. And right away, your parents say, to stop spinning. Stop it. Stop feeling good. Anything fun, funny, right. don't make that face, it'll stay that way. It's just, you're making your friends laugh. You're having a yeah, little fun. That's all you're doing. It's problem. It's terrible. There's no connection either with your parents, no matter what age you are. Even no. now, I have no connection. But I remember being a kid, like my dad trying to tell me about working and the depression and what he had to go through. And I remember actually was laying on the couch oh, God. <laughs> with my arm hanging down, eating chips. <laughs> yeah, right. Must have been awful. Oh, and he's <laughs> but, just thinking about the bread lines. Right. And-, and I couldn't have been lazier or taking it all more for granted. I mean, I look back on it and I go, he must have looked at me like I was just the spawn of the devil. Just a piece of crap. I could never understand it when grandparents would, they would, you force you to finish everything on the plate and would say this line, you eat it all because we don't know if we'll have food tomorrow. When they have a refrigerator and cupboards. cupboards, yeah, there's and plenty a, of food. And a pantry filled it's with food. Ingrained in their head, that whole depression era, uh, 
propaganda. In the back of my mind, I just felt like they were lying. I just actually <laughs> felt like there never was a depression, and there never was a... For uh, Christmas, three of us got an orange, and <laughs> we were so excited. Cherished it. Yes. We love that orange. We wouldn't eat it right away. We'd sit it out there, smell it, look at it. I'm just laying on the couch. What happened? Yeah. We eat cereal. Just never can. I mean, talk about coming up at a really spoiled, stupid time. And now, like, I, you know, I have my own kids, and I'm like, uh, I remember when there was no cable. And I just say, I'm like, what a cable. Yeah. That was the tough one. We got up and changed the channel ourselves. We couldn't talk to our friends online. There was no online. No one cares. No one cares about one story. Listen to this, kids. It's fog hat. Listen. They don't give a fuck. Online was the line at the <laughs> record store before you could download it. Right. Like you kids are doing now. You stood on a, on a real line. We'd sit and look at the album cover. Right. We'd love it. We'd cherish it. Can't clean your pot on an MP3, my friend. <laughs> I used to be so nervous with older people and their false teeth. Because every older person... Everybody had them, yeah. Everyone had them. I thought that... When I was a kid, I thought there was one day where the government basically showed up and said, this is your day to get your false teeth. You're getting everything yanked. Believe it or not, they did. It happened... Uh, my uh, chick's dad went into the Marine Corps, 17. They looked into his mouth and pulled every fucking tooth and said, this will be easier. You'll have false teeth. So, like, 17, 18, he's got fucking plates oh in his my mouth. God. Unbelievable. Yeah. The they were insane. You, what was they, this? This was the like uh, <laughs> late 50s where they thought it's a better idea. Like plastic was the yeah. big movement at the Made time. Made out of a space age polymer. But a lot of those people got false teeth in their early 20s. Just going, wow. this is a better way of dealing. Because really, what were the dentists going to do? Pull or that's it? Mm -hmm. You don't want yeah. to pull it or leave it? Now they do things like every tooth is its own entity. Right. Whatever to save the tooth. Yeah. And, you know, get the money for the root canal right. and the caps and everything else. Did you? Uh, did any of your grandparents or parents put their false teeth in a refrigerator? No, I, I grew up in a white house. Uh, <laughs> Everybody well, was white. No, because my father would do that because he had... False stuck in a rib? Yeah. And he would do... No, not stuck in a <laughs> I hear black people do that, though, when the light bulb goes out. That way they could open it up and it, it brightens it's up the fridge. That's a nice big bright shine. Yeah. Why would they keep... Why? They have mean, a nice cool day the next day? I have day? no idea. He would leave them in a the dish. And one night, I was like the middle of the night, you go to get a glass of water and I opened up the refrigerator oh. and there's a pair of teeth staring back at me. And get bit. Staring. And I got the... I just jumped out of my... I almost jumped through the ceiling because it was just... Because at that, I didn't even realize at that point I was like six or Were seven. Were they chattering with a little wind-up key? In no, the it's just like this real low, teeth. Just like lower. Lord, Lord. <laughs> just a pair of lower molars. And that was when I realized my father had like false teeth. And I just opened it up, like, and I just let out this big scream. And everyone's waking up and going, "It's like what happened?" I'm like, "There's a pair of teeth in the refrigerator." And it's like, that, "No, that's your father's teeth." Go back to bed. Wouldn't you love to see Earl when he was a little kid? Oh, I just picture Stymie. Stymie would be perfect yeah. for you, Earl. Stymie beard. I had a little bowler on my head. And yeah. <laughs> I bet you were fast as hell, too. I bet you could really <laughs> run. If I even look at you now, I bet you could move as a little kid. My brother and I, we were the fastest guys on the block. Oh, yeah. I bet. We, Running we, through adults' legs to get away. <laughs> you and Petey. That was always the thing. It was like, <laughs> for whatever reason, as kids, you just want to do like these stupid, random things. It was just like you'd be walking down the street. Okay, let's race. Let's go. Go. One, two, three, go. And then just take off for whatever reason. Yeah. And it was just these really stupid... With a purse in each hand, both of you running no. as fast as you could? No, we didn't have TVs either. Uh. But it was just stupid random games we would always play mm -hmm. as a kid. Nonsense. Running. <laughs> running. Yeah. Just running. That's what they... That's practicing. The for the black kids, that's called practicing. Let's play running. <laughs> Want to do that running game again? Uh, how that, what are the rules? <laughs> we run. All right. I'm Go. <laughs> Go. First one to touch dad's teeth in the refrigerator <laughs> wins. That must have been a bitch putting him in, though. Cold teeth like that? It can't feel good. Why did he put him good? in the fridge? Why I, did I he am, do that? I, that was air conditioned for him. <laughs> he loved it. it was, <laughs> he always had such cool breath. <laughs> Sitting in front of the hot TV. Honey, get my cold teeth. Get my cold teeth. He he met a cold tea. 
<laughs> that way, none yeah. of the beverages had to be Ice cold. Tea. <laughs> he could drink no matter what beverage. It came yeah. down frosty good. So that was his version of ice cubes. Yeah, it basically was. <laughs> Just taking a beverage over the cold <laughs> teeth would then uh, cool it down. He's brilliant. I'm Earl Sr. and I've invented the to tooth cube. <laughs> I've never heard of this before, Earl. It, I, well, no. my father's strange anyway, but I I never figured that because it would be like in this little compact white dish. Like, and would they go bad if you don't? What were they made out of? Pork? No. <laughs> what? Why would you... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the, I, don't, I have no was, idea. It was just one of those weird little quirks that he would have. Where he just, geez. It, it was just the most unusual thing I'd ever seen before or since. They were black eyed peas. People thought he had cavities. <laughs> For some reason, I'm starving. Just thinking about yeah. this entire dish. I'm hungry. Bobby Flay will probably have it on the menu in a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, but it was definitely one of those weird little things yeah, that my father weird, would do. Right. I'll give you that. It had uh, to be weird for Earl. Boys in the Hood. Every day must have felt like Boys in the Hood. That's all I picture that. Was you it guys like that or, or Menace? Or Menace to Society? Uh, um, you more Boys in the Hood? Probably more Boys in the Hood. Yeah. I love Menace. Out the core. Get out the core. <laughs> it was different What's up, strokes. partner? <laughs> yeah, partner? Movie's great. That's how I base my whole opinion of black people. Just on that movie. Sure. Why not? a good one. They showed a videotape. What was the guy's I'm name? Sorry for your mother. What was the guy named? Uh, o Dog? Was that Menace of Society? I don't know. Every they all started with N. I didn't know O. <laughs> it was just what did I know? <laughs> a bunch of black guys. You were a letter off, right? It was a letter off, but.